Um, Clovis, looks like we've got a result. I think we do have a result. You probably have the figure in the newsroom. From what I've heard, it's 374 and only 99 against. It was a foregone conclusion, uh, Tom. As you know, um, this is a non-binding vote, but important for the French President Emmanuel Macron in order to show the world, show Ukraine, also show Russia, that the uh, French uh, MPs back his strategy, or at least that an overwhelming majority of French politicians believe it's essential to uh, support Ukraine. Actually, when you talk to MPs here, they all say uh, that uh, Ukraine needs to be helped, that Ukraine is an ally, that Russia is committing an aggression with that full-scale invasion that began uh, a little over two years ago. Except that you've got the far-left party, France en Bowed, and the French far-right party, the Rassemblement National, who decided either to abstain or to vote against this bilateral agreement, as those two parties believe that uh, President Macron's strategy is too offensive, uh, if you will, uh, is provoking Russia and could lead to war. That's what those uh, MPs from the far right and the far left have been uh, saying publicly and, say, and telling us also uh, here, uh, notably the far left saying, we need to negotiate peace straight away with Russia. Many here uh, doubt that's a possibility. President Emmanuel Macron and the Ukrainians, of course, and Zelensky, their president, don't believe that either. Yeah, I'm just looking at the numbers now. We haven't actually got an inf a figure, but the reports we've got just say uh, a majority, a large majority of, of MPs supporting uh, this non-binding vote. Um, just tell us a little bit more why, why this was being so closely watched, because had they voted against it, uh, that would have sent a pretty strong message, wouldn't it? Indeed, uh, but it's a symbolic uh, result, of course, uh, because we knew that uh, French politicians uh, f um, supported Ukraine, of course. And for uh, President Emmanuel Macron, there was a political move there also, a way uh, to force every party here in France, notably his opponents, to clarify their positions, to unveil uh, their views, notably the French far right and the French far left accused here of uh, complacency or at least proximity with uh, the Kremlin. Uh, take the French far-right movement and the national rally of Marine Le Pen. Well, in the past, Marine Le Pen did travel to the Kremlin. She did seek allies there years ago. And also, her party got Russian loans years ago. Her argument is that no bank in France would give her money, and that's why she had to turn to Russian banks. Nevertheless, uh, for many in France, notably uh, President Macron and his allies, it's the clear sign that uh, there is too much proximity between uh, Russia and the uh, French far right. So today, a political move possibly from President Macron forcing uh, his opponents uh, to clarify their, their position. This, of course, only three months before the European elections. European elections where you have the French far right tipped to finish first, first, and uh, Emmanuel Macron's Renaissance ruling party only second.